You guys will love this. I've been doing a ton of research on this amygdala, uh, amygdala and, uh, you know, amygdala hijacking and, and all, all this stuff. And they've got breathing. They tell you to breathe, put oxygen in the brain, some people say, um, to help you if, you if you're amygdala, when you feel like you're being uh, going down that road of being ultimately controlled by your, your, your training programming that was done with you. Under the age of seven years old, more than likely from the uh, from the parents, or whatever the parents are in your in your life, you know, whoever raised you up until seven, did this programming, um, because up to that age you're just taking on information, and you're not you're not quid pro quo, you're not going back and forth with information. So um, at that point, so you'll learn how you'll learn that if uh, if you're feeling like you love feeling, so if you, you're feeling what all kids need love and you go to grab, hug your, say your mother and your mother um, rejects you and literally sometimes put people, puts the kid in a cage when a kid comes to them for, for what they need, the primal need of love, affection, the parent can put the kid inside the cage. This will teach the kid um, that that feeling it feels in his chest, if you will, in his heart, in his brain, wherever it's feeling the emotion from you and I, you know, whatever I can connect with you, obviously it's in the brain biologically it feels like it's in the heart right so um that feeling um will then be associated with pain so when it feels love it will know that that means it goes in a cage and 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 there it, that feeling never gets satisfied or it gets punished or some form of negative feedback for the feelings of love so then the kid learns that love equals no good so let's, let's fast forward. Um, so at seven years old, it starts running around outside playing with other kids. The love feeling is not needed because it's learning now about, you know, sandboxes and all this other stuff in the exterior world. And it's learning from other kids it meets. Um, at one point, it, it, the kids, they come across an, an opposite sex or I'm going to say opposite sex. And, um, and they start bonding, bonding. They do their sexual act, maybe not. Nevertheless, um, at one point, the kid starts feeling uh, love towards this other person and poof that feeling comes up and that pain comes and now the kid associates this new person with uh, a painful feeling not a love feeling it's a painful feeling so the, the kid now looks at that other person and says oh this person is quite painful and, and they don't know you don't know as even as an adult that this person is not painful all you know is they're causing this pain inside you Consequently, this is how you all, some people get mistakenly called narcissists because then they shut down that heart, that feeling, and the person on the other side says, uh, hey, you're not talking to me, you're not doing this, and you're in a vicious, vicious cycle where they, the feeling goes away because, and then they come back into the relationship, and the next thing you know, the feeling's back, and these people might tell you things like, I feel love for you, I feel loveies, whatever they may say, and then it goes away, and you're in this crazy, like, what happened? I thought you felt it. All right, moving on. So how do you how do you suppress this? I don't think you can suppress it with a. Uh, let me just move on from that statement I was going to say. How do you suppress the amygdala? The amygdala. The amygdala. The amygdala. The amygdala. The amygdala, the amygdala, the amygdala, the amygdala, amygdala. How do you suppress um, suppress it when it starts taking over? For example, if you start saying something like that asshole at work or that jerk at work, the moment you say those words, we're going to say the amygdala is now kicked in. You're not talking on in your rational sense at this point because you, you're not saying, hey, I had a problem at work and this person caused me some strife. The moment you start describing the person at work with the negative terms, you are now you are now being hijacked, baby. You're there. And as I agree that uh, a couple of people have, uh, um, have theorized it, it's like a little beginning and then it goes into a three-minute tunnel of just getting worse and worse. And then and when you're finally out of it, it might take three hours to come down or calm down and you got to call other people up. That's still that stupid ass amygdala um, kicking in. You're not rational. You're not saying, wow, that guy suckered me in or that girl suckered me in. And well, I've got to learn from that. I'll just stay with that person in a calm way. All right. So here's the kicker. Here's the great winner at the end. Now it's a primal thing, right? It's primal. How do you get at it immediately when you feel like you're being frustrated by anyone? It's so simple, you're going to love it, and I'm going to hold off no longer. You're going to suffocate yourself. What the hell? Yeah, you're going to suffocate yourself. What does that mean when I say suffocate yourself? Let me let me explain. Just grab your, pinch off your nose, close your mouth with your hand, whatever. 
Now you can't talk anymore, so now you can't communicate this person that's bothering you. And you now cut your oxygen off. What is that? Primal, baby. You need oxygen. That amygdala, amygdala will now say, screw that argument that we just had, or that we were going down that path. Now we need oxygen. What's going on here? We need oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. It's an immediate thing. It also kicks in immediately overriding that, that one thing, the amygdala, amygdala, amygdala sent you down on that path. It now becomes primary. This jumps to the front of the ship, oxygen. Immediately, those negative thoughts you had about this person are gone. It's gone. Hold it out as long as you need to do and you know, hit it again. Now, you might have to disguise this in a form of like you're going to sneeze with someone and, you know, do your little sneeze trick and then and turn your head away. You know, 10 seconds later, holding your mouth, keep your mouth closed, holding your nose, you're going to uh, immediately see that you're only going to be thinking about oxygen. And when you release, you know, this person's no longer going to be in your zone. And now you're going to reprogram your amygdala that um, anger equals lack of oxygen. And, and it's not going to want to go down that way. So when a person rages you, your, your amygdala is going to say, that equals lack of oxygen. I'm not going down that way with this person. I'm not going to do the next wording. Now, don't choke yourself out because the person says something nasty to you. It's only when you feel yourself going down attacking them or fighting back against them because you, ultimately you can't fight somebody that's irritating, irritating the hell out of you. They're just irritating the hell out of you. They're all into this amygdala at this point. They're not in your, they're not in your conscious they're actually in your in your amygdala, irritating that, and you're going to feed right into it. And that could be something as simple as uh, politicians. You know, people get mad at the at presidents. You know, that's ridiculous. I've got friends that just go off about who's the president. I'm glad that, that wasn't programmed on my amygdala. I don't care who's the president, right or wrong, one way, left way. I've got they can't touch me in here. All you can do is talk to me about. Um, you know, you can only hit me in a psychological, regular communication, rational way when you talk about presidents. I can't, you can't touch me. All right. So I hope this is helpful. And then uh, one more thing I wanted to add now that I told you about that oxygen thing. Darn it. It was, um, well, you know what? I'll add more and more in the comments. But that is the, uh, that's the one. Test it. Believe me, test it. Go ahead and think about it. The president burns you up. Um, test it out. And, and also I'm going to test this on, uh, on someone else I know. I would love, you know, if he lets me test it on him, he's, he's, uh, he's like a father to me. Um, he gets quite upset with things. I would love for him to try this out. If this, this should work on him without him ever knowing what's going on. And I won't share with him what this is, but I'll ask him to trust me to do this. And when he does it, it I'm going to see if it changes him immediately. Um, so I'm sharing that with you because I hope you also do this for people that you may know. And um, just tell them I trust you to please do it, and, and, and you'll see the difference. All right. I know this will be helpful, helpful for you. Again, it's hit the oxygen, cut it off immediately, and, and you're done. You are re-hijacked your... Uh, <laughs> Forget it. I'm shutting up.